Yes, so I think that's of Gaurav giving this wonderful opportunity for uh, his life surgery from our institute. And thanks, Dr. Satan Shumathu, Dr. Amir, Dr. Vinod Arora, and entire team of UK SOS, and uh, to all our uh, panelists for this session. And thanks to Biotech for giving us the opportunity. So, this is a plan for toric ile implantation. You can see these are the marks 0 and 1 degree reference marks, which we have yeah. on this plan. These are very thin marks. And before we put marks, we always put a scratch there. If you can appreciate that there are some scratch marks here. So that, you know, these scratch marks, they never go away, even if the ink fades. So this patient required one diopter of the uh, cylinder at the IOL plane and the 0.75 diopter correction at the corneal plane. And the cross cylinder result shows that we require to put this IOL at the 79 degree, which has been calculated. So I go ahead and put 79 degree with this 26 gauge needle. No, I know Raul, I know. Can you put some ink, please? So that these marks are very thin. So always go and mark first with this thin 26 gauge needle and not directly with the uh, ink pen so that they don't, you know, extend. So these are the two marks at 79 degree. Can I have the, can you give me needle again, please? Needle, yeah, with ink. So this is the axis of the implantation for toric IOL. And so this again, I'm just extending it. So this is 79 degree mark. So after that, we just wash away excess there. Dr. Mahink is there. Okay. Okay. Hi, Dr. Sheetal. That was a very nice presentation on uh, me loop or my loop, whatever you call it. So this is the first side port incision which I make. So I use uh, this 1.2 millimeter keratome as it gives the calibrated incision. As you can see, this is money blade. It goes very smoothly. And here we put uh, Minokin plus before we start the case, as it numbs the uveal tissue so that the uh, patient doesn't feel stretching sensation in uh, topical anesthesia. So if there are any questions, we can keep on come, uh, discussing in between also, Dr. Sheetal. Dr. Rajendra Prasad is there. So this is the 1.8 millimeter keratome. I routinely use 1.8 millimeter incision for all my cataract surgeries. Upper light mein dekhenge? So I also welcome Dr. Mayank Agrawal, who will be doing next case uh, of trio trifocal IOL. So here I go and trying to fashion the upper dekhi light mein. Ha, but. So I give a cut here. So the sizing of capsular axis we all know is very crucial in all these IOL, toric and multifocal IOL. So we need to be very careful during capsular access. Am I centered there? Yes, you are centered. Okay. Healing it. The micro capsular axis for steps. Yeah. 
Visco, please. So again, you need to go and put Visco so that you don't lose the depth of the chamber. While coming to the last part of chapter exercise. Okay, so now we have a capsular axis which is not more than five millimeter here. Go ahead and take off the viscoelastic from the anterior chamber before I do hydro dissection. And here the wave traverses down. So I'm very thankful to Dr. Gaurav for teaching me the art of Tori Kaiwal, which we started 10, 12 years back. That was the first time when I saw Dr. Gaurav doing it in Dehradun. Dehradun, uh, my wife is from Dehradun, so once in a year, I always go to Dehradun and learn new techniques from Dr. Gaurav for last so many years. Dr. Gaurav is there or not? I think he's busy somewhere else. He was in the OT, sir, so I believe now he is not connected. Okay, never mind. So this case has a nucleus grade 3 sclerosis. So I go ahead and try to rotate this nucleus. Hold this nucleus and chop it. Can you see this chop in two pieces? So it's important to get this complete division before you start for the fragmentation and further removal. So this is the Hartley FICO machine which I'm using. Uh, this is a one point meter co MICS tip which I routinely use for all grade of cataract. Am I audible there? Yes, you are audible, Dr. Harshad. Please carry on. Okay. Always try to keep the echo probe uh, in center. Let all the pieces come into your echo probe. This is the other half which I am rotating and uh, So regarding the capsular axis, you should always try to be on the smaller side as you can always enlarge the axis in the end to get the benefit of complete overlap of the IOL optic, especially in toric and multifocal and trifocal IOL. So it's very important that you don't have a you know, bigger axis in the beginning. Okay. Well, according to you, Dr. Harshul, what is the most appropriate size of axis for toric IOLs? 5.25 millimeter. Okay. Because you want that the IOL it gets locked in place. 
and it doesn't rotate and it doesn't you know shift its position seedha light mein dekhenge lens khol dijiye i think dr rajendra prasad is not there that's what i feel otherwise it can't be that he doesn't throw questions no so machine is excellent chamber stability you can see as piece but there no no change in the settings or whatsoever and to finish off with the emulsification part Visco, please. So once we are done with the, see the light, where they can be very good. I'm putting visco elastic. So this is a modified visco elastic camera which I have designed. It has, it is a 23 gauge camera, 25 gauge. It goes through side port easily. You can make out it has a curve like this. It's easier to reach different places wherever you need. And uh, it has a screwing type of system, so that you know you need to screw it up. But see the light, we're looking at both actually. So by manual is my preferred technique for irrigation aspiration. Doctor, my English scrub here. uh is it well focused there can you see it clearly yes uh, we are able to be, we are seeing it clearly and it is well focused thank you thank you so in by manual whenever you finish this 180 degree go ahead and change your hands don't try to go in angles That's the real advantage of doing a new system. ओके तो सीधा लाइट में देखेंगे बहुत अच्छा है ना वेरी गुड आई गो ऑन आई ए टू मोर एंड टेक ऑफ दिस इट्स इंपॉर्टेंट टू क्लीन अप दर कैपल बैग नाइसली फोर यू गो एंड एंड इम्प्लांट आई वेल so here now we need to this was one more 8 mm we need to enlarge the incision so uh, the lens which i'm going to implant is uh, the icrel toric iol is a beautiful lens we are using for last so many years It gives very predictable results uh, in fact by biotech and uh, it's, we all know it's a hydrophobic uh, acrylic iol the same platform as the icrel lens so it has uh, i'll show you the historic marks here you can see these two lines are there so it uh, comes with this butterfly cartridge so you need to load it like a baby and it's ready for implantation to so, love to implant them under arterial uh, sutra and hydro implantation so this is a technique which i described in 
and it has real advantages for all these kind of lenses. So see, my irrigation canola is there. You can see the visco, little visco, whatever is there, it's coming out, and the lens nicely goes in the capsular bag. Use cube lens soap to put it in. Now, advantage is that you don't you know, need to go behind RUL and need to take viscoelastic out. And so, viscoelastic, because we all know that it acts like lubricant and is responsible for post operative rotation of toric RUL. So, here I can see that the axis is smaller this side. So, before I go for final alignment, I like to enlarge it from this side. Light may can see the upper half. So I go with my left hand, give a small cut there. So you need to use both of your hands in situations like this. And large direction. And light we can see both of them. Now you see, you can appreciate now, I'll tell patient to look in this straight coaxial light. So that's how you can center your lens very well. Do gentle hydro stitch. Herschel, very nice surgery. Yes, thank you so much. Perfect. Well explained. The biotech lens are really very good lens. Yes, yes. The results are really very good. Yes, Dr. Meng, what are you saying? See, if you use OVD, then you need to first, you know, remain 5, 10 degrees off the axis, remove viscoelastic, and then go. Then also, you can't remove the entire viscoelastic, you know. So sure that's why I love this. Uh, I should have you tried this is Yes, yes, Satanshi. I should have you tried injecting the IOL under the air without the viscoelastic. Under air, under the flute. I hear you. Uh, can you please come again, Dr. Satanshi? I hear you. Can you please come again? Ashur, can you listen to me? Yes, yes, I can hear you now. Have you tried injecting the IOL again. without viscoelastic under the air or with the flute? Yeah. In toric? No, that's what I did. I did I did hydro implantation only just now. I don't use viscoelastic. And this is a special my modified hydro stage cannula, which is bent at 85 degree. It has one millimeter tip so that you know I easily hydrate all the incisions with uh, in topical anesthesia. So you can see the aisle is nicely sitting there. So before the speculum, make sure you zoom. Now see the case, the lens is well aligned. I think you all can appreciate that it's well aligned. The rexus is overlapping nicely all around. So I zoom down, I take off the speculum and see at the end of the surgery, after I take out my speculum that aisle is well centered, and it's not rotating. That's the way you should come out 
ठीक है बहुत अच्छा हो गया ना सो विद दिस वी कम टू एंड ऑफ दिस सर्जरी